Welcome back guys. If you're new here, my name is Brad and I'm out here on our 20 acres in Northwest Florida that my wife Deb and I bought five years ago and we're turning it into our homestead. We do a lot of tractor work, a lot of excavator work, and a lot of just general building this 20 acres into our future forever home. So if you like that type of content, consider subscribing. We'd love to see you back. But today's video is gonna be about tractors and tillers. Well, actually it's gonna be about tillers. There's a lot of folks out there that are new to the compact tractor scene. And one thing that's uh, really cool to have if you have a compact tractor or any kind of tractor is a tiller. And in this case, I have a five foot king cutter tiller. So we're gonna go over the tiller, kind of talk about a couple things about it and just show you how I use it. Now I've had this tiller for three years now, I think. So I've got a pretty good idea of how it works. So let's take a closer look, look at the tiller, how it hooks up, talk about how deep that it tills, and then we'll do a demonstration. So if you're new to the tractor scene and you're out there wondering what brand you should get as far as implements, I will say this, I am not implement or brand specific or brand loyal, but I will say I've had a lot of success with Kubota tractors and a lot of success with King Cutter tillers. Now there are other manufacturers out there. John Deere has the Frontier series, I think. Land Pride is another series of implements out there. And then also Tractor Supply has County Line. Now all of those are probably good equipment, but what I will say about buying an implement is rather than trying to buy the cheapest one that may be a no-name brand, I would get a brand tiller because of parts availability. When you buy a brand name, there's a much better chance that that brand is still around 10 years from now when you need bearings or some sort of part for that piece of equipment. I bought a Titan post hole digger. It's been a great post hole digger. We put in well over 100 posts out here on Piney Grove, but the cutting edges wore out on it. And when I went to Titan to buy new cutting edges, they don't have parts for that auger and they don't sell that particular auger anymore. So I recommend get a name brand implement and a name brand tra tractor. But I'm not a salesman. We're not sponsored out here at Piney Grove, but we are impressed by Kubota and we're impressed by King Cutter. So this is a five foot tiller and tillers rotate in one of two ways, uh, whether they rotate forward and kick the debris out the back or they reverse rotate and kick it up under the tractor. This is one that rotates in a clockwise fashion and kicks it back this way against this tailgate. So this tailgate lifts up. If you are in a certain type of soil or maybe there's a lot of debris, you might wanna take that chain and shorten it and keep this up so that things kick out behind it. But I always want a smooth finish behind, a nice smooth seed bed, so I always leave this down. Got the chain in a different configuration from the manufacturer because I actually put a hitch on back of this tiller to pull a colta packer, but I don't have that colta packer out here on Piney Grove, so I'll have to demonstrate that in a different video. So tillers run off of your PTO, your power takeoff of your tractor. And as far as I know, most of them are gonna run at that 540 uh, PTO RPM. So they're run by the PTO. The PTO turns this gearbox, it changes the direction of the force to a sideways force. This is just a dummy end and the gearbox is on that side. That's the configuration of this king cutter. Other tillers may be different. So this ge gearbox here transfers the power down to the actual tiller and the tiller is what has the tines on it that tills up the soil. Your top link, like any three point hitch, is gonna adjust the angle of the tiller and we'll show you on the side why that's important. And everything else about it is just typical three point hitch. Now I will add right here that on the PTO shaft, because this is so close to the tractor, a lot of times with a new tiller, you'll get a PTO shaft that's too long and you'll think you have the wrong shaft, but that's not what happened. They put out a standard shaft that fits many tractors. And if yours won't collapse enough to hook up to your tractor, you probably have to cut a few inches off of it. And that's common practice. I would say 50% of people that get tillers have to cut their PTO shaft. Now this PTO shaft coming off the tractor is hooked to a slip clutch. And what that allows is if these tines were to hit a stump, the slip clutch that is between the tractor PTO and this gearbox will slip and therefore you won't harm the tractor or harm the tiller. Now what I found is the first time I used this from the factory, the springs in that slip clutch, well, they were only a couple threads from being as tight as they could be. But when I put it in this hard clay soil out here in North Florida, it wouldn't turn the tiller. The clay would actually stop the tiller. So I had to wrench down on them. My slip clutch is as tight as it can be. Um, so I just gotta be aware of that if I'm in a stumpy environment, that mine probably won't slip as easy as maybe the manufacturer recommended that the settings be on it. But uh, that pretty much covers the three-point hitch part of it. 
Now let's go to the side of the tiller and talk about adjustment and how deep they actually till. Now I think there's a perception out there, and I'm probably guilty of it as well before I actually bought a tiller, is that these are a deep tillage type of implement, but they're not. This right here guides how deep that the tiller can go. And right now you can see it's got two separate adjustments here. It's on its lowest setting. If I were to move this bolt to this hole or this hole, it would push that down and in effect not allow the tines to go deeper into the soil. So I just measured this up at the mega shed and I measured from where the tiller, the bottom of the tines are on the tiller or to this plate right here. And with this at its max amount of tillage, its max depth setting, it only tills about three inches. It might be a little bit over that, but that's as far as it tills. It only tills down to here. Now it does pulverize that top three inches. It makes a really nice fluffy seed bed where your seeds can uh, be put into that and then packed in. It'll grind up all this thatch and incorporate it in the soil and increase your organic matter. So your soil has better water carrying properties going forward. But what it doesn't do is it doesn't deep till. If you use a tiller, rototiller like this too often, or let's say over a period of 10 years, eventually your top three inches will be nice and fluffy and you know ready for seed, but the plants can't get their roots any deeper than that three inches because you've created a hard pan under that because of going back and forth with your tractor and your other equipment. And maybe you've gone over it when it's wet and it's compacted even more, especially if you have a high clay content. So keep that in mind. These are not deep tillage pieces of equipment. They're good for a few years, but maybe every, I'd say three to five years, you probably should look at uh, deep plowing or chisel plowing and breaking up that hard pan and mixing some of that soil deeper than three inches with the soil that's at three inches. Uh, for food pots, it's gonna be fine, but uh, for things that like a garden or something, you might wanna look at deep tillage. So with the tractor off, I'm gonna lower it down and show you how I've set it, but I've adjusted the top link so that this skid is gonna be pretty much level with the ground. And if I got it wrong, I can adjust it. But I'm gonna show you the tines are just now touching the ground. I'm pretty even across the bottom here, but that's as far as it tills, is from there to there. The tines are touching and they're not gonna, this tiller will not go any lower than this skid right here. By adjusting the top link, you can turn this. Um, I had it before at more of that type of angle, but now I've got it pretty flat. It doesn't look like I have it perfect. It looks like I could shorten the top link a little bit, but uh, this will be good enough. It's a food plot. So as far as servicing, this is the non-driven end and you wanna make sure that grease fitting on that bearing always has plenty of grease in it. And then you also wanna make sure your drive shaft on your PTO where it hooks to the tractor and over here where it hooks to your gearbox, make sure that those are lubed properly and make sure the center gearbox here has the right amount of fluid in it, should be 90 weight oil. King Cutter says it's all gear driven. I actually don't know. I know that there's a gear up here and I know that there's a gear down here that turns the rototiller. I don't know how this gear connects to that gear. I think there's a chain, but I'm not sure. Check the level right here. The oil should always be filled to this level and this is where you fill it and this is also your breather. But when you change it, you're gonna take out all of these bolts, pull that off and all the old fluid will come out and you'll put in new fluid. So like I said, I've only had this a couple years. If you're wondering the price point, this cost me $1,750, I think, um, two, three years ago. And they're probably well over 2000 now. So they're not a cheap piece of equipment. So you can see my tines don't have a lot of wear. When these wear, this is the leading edge that hits the soil first these will actually wear like in a triangle, I guess, and this part will wear away. Uh, but you can see every one of them's replaceable. It's not a fun or easy job to replace them, but it can be done. I've got 10 or 12 acres on this tiller, and uh, you see I don't have a, a whole bunch of wear. You can you know, see that the paint is worn back on them, and the leading edge is worn a little, but they still got a lot of life left. Now, one thing I definitely wanna stress is on this bearing on this side, well, actually on either side, is that you gotta make sure that whatever you're tilling isn't like full of long viney stuff. Because if it is, it'll wrap around the edges on those bearings and it'll start to heat up. And the pieces, the, the vines and whatever that you're trying to chop up will actually make their way past the seal and ruin the seal. A piece of wire will do it real quick too. So what you wanna do if you're tilling something that's very thick, well, first thing you should do is mow and then do what I did here and burn it off with a herbicide so that all this stuff is crispy and tills up nicely. But if you don't do that, if you go into something green, it's um, real long, like a foot or so, 
check those end bearings because they'll get wrapped up and they will heat up. They'll just keep wrapping and wrapping. They'll heat up, they'll burn out your bearings. And you're looking at probably $400 to change a bearing on one side of this tiller. And the area I was talking about is right there. That's where you'll get the buildup is on that end and you will have to keep that clean and you may have to bring a knife with you and keep that nice and clean by cutting off everything that's wrapped around there. Okay, let's talk tractor specs for a minute. So this is the L3901 Kubota tractor, non-turbo, and it has about 39 horsepower, 38 horsepower at the engine. But by the time it comes through the transmission, you're probably looking at 32, 33 horsepower at the PTO shaft. So with that amount of horsepower, I have no problem running a five foot tiller. You can probably run it maybe with a little less horsepower, but if you have less than 30 horsepower, I'd probably recommend a four foot tiller. And if you're thinking about a six foot tiller to get the job done quicker, I'd say you might want a 40 horsepower tractor. But a five foot tiller works real good on the Kubota L3901. All right, time for demonstration. This one acre field actually slopes from my right down to my left. So I'm gonna do everything crossways here. And I'm just gonna show you how I till. And the biggest thing I guess I wanna get across there is that don't go too fast. I, I like to have my tiller where it's going as deep as possible and the tractor just can't chop it up real good if you're going fast. And that's kind of the biggest thing I see people doing. The biggest mistake I see is they try to go too fast with a tiller and also they try to make turns with a tiller. You don't wanna harm those bearings on a tiller. So always go straight and at the end of your row, pick up your tiller, turn around and come back the other way. Never leave your tiller down and make a turn because then you'll get that axial loading on the bearings and it's just not made for that. So hopefully you can hear me. Got the tractor idling and uh, I'm not gonna actually have it at the right RPMs when I drop the tiller. But I'm gonna start the tiller, engage the PTO. Very noisy. Then I'm gonna drop it. And as I drop it, I'm gonna move forward. So I dropped it and I kept moving. What you don't wanna do is drop a tiller and the tractor's not moving. It'll dig out a furrow right there and then you'll have all of these like speed bumps at the end of your field. And that's not cool when you're trying to brush hog three months from now when you forgot that you tilled it. So as you're dropping it, you keep the tractor moving and then just push it down all the way because it can only go as far as those skids that we showed you earlier. And then you wanna move at a good enough speed so that you're not clumping the material behind you the material's hitting the tailgate there and leaving a nice smooth finish. So go as fast as you can go while still adequately tilling. And we just had a rain out here. We got a little bit of moisture, but we don't have a whole bunch of moisture. So I'm gonna be able to go pretty quick through here. All right, there you go. There's three passes. Didn't take me long at all. Got just enough moisture. We're not raising a lot of dust. And this top three inches is completely pulverized and it's taken this organic matter and chopped it in and that all these, this dead grass out here will become part of the soil. So if I take my finger and go down there to about that three, three and a half inch mark, it's tilled and it's nice, but then it, you still have that hard pan underneath. But just keep that in mind that this is great and this works year after year, but at some point you probably need to uh, break up that hard pan. So apparently when I knelt down there to check that soil out there, I put my knee right in an anthill and I put my hand right in an anthill and uh, they were biting me, so I got out of there. But I think that's what I enjoy the most about planting is just turning this, you know, this field that's all dried grass that I burn off with a herbicide, putting down the seed, and now I have that pretty brown streak there behind the tractor. I'll work that all the way across this one acre field and uh, just kind of tilling the land, working the land. I think that's part, 
part of it is, is owning land and having country property, but the other part is actually, you know, working the soil. It's soothing, it's relaxing, and it's just pretty. It's pretty that uh, soil behind the tractor, and that's what a tiller does for you. But I enjoyed spending time with you guys today. Hopefully you enjoyed tagging along as well. If you did, please click that like button. Consider subscribing if you haven't already and share with your friends, help us grow our channel. We'd really appreciate it. But I gotta get on the tractor and finish the rest of this one acre field. So until next time, y'all take care out there. And remember, life is short, tractor hard.